Thank you, dude. Appreciate it. Uh, this week I was, is it not working for me now? Is it on? Oh. Uh, I was kind of proud, like taking a sec, like taking a week away from the picture. I was like, I don't know, it kind of looks good. Maybe I should get, maybe I should get back into it. Oh, never mind. Changed my mind. Um, what was it? Anyway, okay. Uh, let's see, Clay is so right. One of the times um, we went into a buddy's room. He had his room unlocked. It was like 2 a.m. And we went in there and started making like demon noises and, and Clay shook his bed and we ran out and uh, slammed the door. And he told me, that, I'm not kidding, this is one of my other really close friends and uh, the next morning he's like, dude, I had the craziest dream last night. <laughs> he was like, they were like, I swear someone was in my, bed, in my bedroom and like shaking my bed and screaming and, and then I kind of fell back asleep. It's like two hours later, I ran out and looked in the hall. I was like, yeah, that sounds weird. I don't know. It, but I finally told him. And uh, my gosh, is the fire alarm going to go off in here or what? Um, I do think it's cool, though. I like it. Uh, glad you guys are here. Glad you're back. And uh, we've, we've had a fun start, haven't we? Uh, let's see. Last week, we talked about, um, oh, wait a second. Where's he at? Jacob Thomason. My Lord and my God, we're so thankful that you were born, what, 21, 22 years ago? 20? 21 years ago, Jacob Thompson was born. We're not going to sing because that's always been a pet peeve of mine, but happy birthday. And we love you and we're glad you're here and thank you for always bringing my table up. You do it so well and, uh, and I appreciate that. Last week we, we jumped into phase one of the... Uh, this idea of moving freedom forward and the phases of freedom. And so phase one is, is all about absolute slavery, just completely stuck in your slavery, not thinking there's an option out, uh, not, not even moving in that direction, or maybe you don't even know that you're possibly slave to something. You just are unaware, and kind of my hope was that this last week that maybe there were times that uh, God prompted you to think about, hey, what are some things I'm maybe unaware of? What am I doing? What am I uh, missing out on? Maybe as simple as like when someone else tells you like, hey, you do this a lot. It's kind of weird or annoying or whatever. Like usually the feedback we hate hearing the most is probably the feedback that is most accurate, right? So uh, just moments where we're thinking about, hey, where am, I, where am I a slave? What do I not know that is keeping me um, from who God wants me to be? This week, we move into phase two. And this is uh, mindful slavery. Do we have the things still or no? It's okay if not. Um, so th this is mindful slavery. Aware of your slavery. Also aware that there are other alternati alternative ways to live. But kind of maybe still really scared, stuck in fear. It's really easy here to move back to phase one. So we'll talk about it, explain it, and uh, it'll be great. So tonight we are going to continue talking about the Israelites talking about their exodus, how God came to Moses. Remember, Moses was like, no, I can't do it. And God was like, yeah, man, like I'm with you. I've called you. You are who I'm going to use to help get the Israelites free. I have a plan. Just trust me. And so Moses finally was like, okay, I'll do it. So we get to this point where Moses has gone back to Pharaoh, and uh, now there were multiple plagues that God sent. And eventually Pharaoh's like, fine, because it was the, the firstborn of the Egyptians were killed. And uh, the Israelites, if they put the blood of the lamb over their doorway, right, over the, the Passover, uh, they were spared. And so the Israelites now are finally able to go because Pharaoh's like, that's it. I don't want anything else bad to happen, so just get out of here. Leave. So they get to this point where they're gone a few days and they're at a certain spot. And, uh, and then God actually tells them to move. And this is when they're by the Red Sea and in between a mountain. And then... Pharaoh is like, hey, I changed my mind. Let's go get him. And uh, that's what we're going to pick up. And so, the is, it, well, I'll just read it. It says this. As Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up, and there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. It would be really good if the passage just stopped there, if they didn't say anything else. But they continue. They said to Moses, was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? I've read this passage a lot this week, and that is going to be my new catchphrase. Like, when Em and I are at the store, I'm going to be like, what? 
Were there not enough graves at our apartment that you brought me here to die at Whole Foods? Like, is this what you want for me? Uh, I just think it's a great line. Like, why would they say that? <laughs> what have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone. Let us serve the Egyptians. It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. They are, they are just moving quickly back to phase one. Let me pray quick. God, I'm thankful for tonight, like always. We just uh, we believe that you're here, and it's always just awesome when we can take a moment to be aware of you, and we're thinking about you, and we're leaving everything else at the door, and uh, not that that stuff's not important, but when we come here, we re recharge and believe that we are, uh, we're going to go face those things now with a new perspective. So we thank you for your love and your grace. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. This last weekend... Emma and I went down to Austin, also Pastor Kate and Pastor Casey uh, went as well, and uh, we had an old buddy from college getting married, and uh, so we made a quick trip to Austin. It was like 24 hours, and it was a lot of fun, but we decided that, because Casey left Thursday, because he was the best man, so we needed to get down there to, to plan the parties and all the good time they were going to have. So we left Friday when uh, Emma got off work, and so Emma and Kate and I drive down there, and we go to the hotels, and then the next morning we're like, let's, let's go to breakfast, let's go to get coffee, we can eat downtown, the wedding's not till 2, it'll be amazing, it'll be delightful, we'll just have such a great time. Like, it'll just be us, we'll get to enjoy uh, Austin, it'll be a nice little mini vacation. And uh, so that's what we did. We wake up, we go to brunch at a place that cost me $47. We uh, then went to a coffee shop that almost cost that much. And then I got mine and I ordered a Snickerdoodles uh, cold brew, okay? I thought that Snickerdoodles were just little Snickers. Like I didn't know that they were cinnamon. So I grab the cold brew and I'm like, yes, and I just smash it. And not that I don't like cinnamon, but there was a lot in it. So I just take a huge gulp and I'm like, oh, they messed my drink up. They messed my drink. There's cinnamon in it. That's not what I ordered. And they were like, no, that's a snickerdoodle. And I was like, hmm, what? <laughs> and uh, so we're, we leave there. I literally was like, I don't want my coffee. So we went to a Starbucks reserve because we're spoiled, I guess, and um, we're there. And a Starbucks reserve is like more fancy than regular Starbucks. I learned that too. It was a great trip of education. And uh, we are sitting there, and the wedding's at 2. We are in downtown Austin, okay? The wedding's at 2 o'clock. And I'm like, hey, guys, it's 1.25. I say we're 11 minutes away from the venue, so there, there's plenty of time. But I'm like, let's go a little early. Like, we, we got down here. Uh, way early, a uh, day early, and so let's make sure we got good seats. I love weddings. I'm a sucker for them, so I want to make sure I'm, I'm, I've got, I'm right next to the bride. She walks down, so I can just smile at her, you know, <laughs> and, uh, and so I was like, let's get out of here. So we get in the car, and as we turn on the road, I mean, I think it was literally called Main Street, maybe? I don't know. Uh, it's like a six-minute drive, and then we'll hit the venue, okay? That's it, and it's 1.30 at this time. And as we're pulling up, I'm like, what is, what, is what is happening? I can't, what is going on up there? Because traffic is coming to an absolute standstill. But then after that, it's like nothing. And I saw the light turn green, and nobody moved. And I was like, oh my gosh. Like, started to panic. I was like, it's, it's really happening. It's the end of the world. And, um, and then just like a, like a moment of just stillness. Very eerie. There's no wind. And then all of a sudden, from the shadows of the buildings comes thousands of people protesting right in front of us. And I was like, what? Oh my gosh. And so panic immediately. All the laws that govern the city go out the window. I'm driving halfway on the sidewalk, honking my horn. And like, finally, I'm like, so we're headed north, right? And so I was like, I'll turn east. I'm sure that it started there and they're going to move that way. As I turn east and, and we go around some other buildings and I see that oh, looks like we're trapped right now. Because now people are going north, they're going east or west, right? I don't know. Either way, we begin to then, I'm like, oh, what do we do? I turn around, go the other way. There they are. They're, they're going. Like, they, they're, we're stuck. We are truly trapped. Like, it is comical. It, was, it felt like an absolute movie, uh, like the Truman Show, uh, where they're like, hey, we need to, he's, he's on to us. So send out all the lemonade stands and traffic jams. Like, that's what it felt like. And... Uh, 
And, and listen, I got to tell this part because it's, I'm a pastor and I honestly feel like God was laughing at me because all of a sudden, I'm, we have no idea what the protest is for, but all of a sudden I see this guy with this big cross. I was like, what is happening? And he's carrying it along. I roll my window down and somewhere, like it sounded like it was in my head, but somebody had a speaker blasting music that was like, our God is an awesome God, right? Like, can't even hit the high note, right? Like, that's how loud it was. Like, and I was like, are you, this is, so it was a pro-life protest. But I was like, God, you, you're, 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 you're taunting me with your music. Like, you know that I need to get to this wedding, and I hate being late, and we got down here last night. Like, I am literally stuck. And uh, I park in the middle of the road, and I get out, and he's like, where are you going? I slam the door, and I walk over to uh, a cop uh, who's just standing there, and I was like, hey, am I stuck? And he was like, yep. <laughs> I was like, there's, there, there's no way. Like, I, I got to get to a wedding. There's, you can't help me out or something? He's like, no, nah, it just goes all the way around. It's full block protest. I was like, Bleh. And uh, so we get in the car. It's like 1.52. We've been in the car for almost 30 minutes now, just protesters looking at it. It's as, as if they began to protest us. Like, that's what it felt like, right? And uh, I'm just totally stuck, and I am driving all down lanes. I'm going against the one lane, because I'm like, nobody's coming in. Like, if I can't get out, nobody's coming in. So I'm just driving up the roads. And uh, finally, I see this other cop, and I'm like, I guess I'll just ask him. And I was like, hey, man, do I, can I get out of here? And he was like, yeah, just go that way. And I was like, are you sure? Because I've been that way like 12 times. He's like, I promise you can go that way now. So we turn, and uh, still a large traffic jam, stuck. And I'm like, what is going on? Maybe you can remember a time where uh, you're on your way somewhere in a hurry, because it always seems like you're in a hurry, and uh, a train starts coming, right? Like, or maybe there's like a weird bike race that you had no idea about. You're like, what is he doing? And, uh, or just a regular marathon. Like, and I don't know, maybe if I watched the news, like, I'd be aware of those things. But usually it's just, oh, pop-up marathon. We decided to do it on the spot. Like, come join us. And, uh, and so maybe you can remember those times uh, that you've been in a situation like that. And, and obviously, I mean, I think even you can kind of pick up the metaphor is that there's a lot of times we might get stuck in our life, certain things that we feel stuck and we don't know what to do or how to move forward. And, and maybe it's you're like, hey, do I stick with my major or do I not? Like, I really can't make a decision. And it's kind of like what we talked about last week usually has to do with the fact that we feel like the future is really uncertain. What's next? What's going to happen? Uh, and so we kind of are just constantly figuring out uh, what to do. I told you when I was in college, I switched my major five times. Five times I switched my major. And uh, every time, it, it never felt like I was moving forward. It just felt like I was constantly like doing this. Like I never really was moving forward because I wouldn't just, just stop, you know, for a second and see what other possibilities they are or just trust that something is going to happen. So that's exactly kind of the situation that the Israelites find themselves in. They're finally able to leave Egypt, and uh, they're now at this certain place, and God has told them to move, and so they're a little bit confused. And uh, they're like, God, what? Why, do you, why are you telling us to move? And they're figuring out that, that uh, Pharaoh is coming to get them. And so God tells them this. It is, uh, it's in this part. They were at Etham, okay? That's where they originally camped. And then God says, tell the Israelites to turn back and encamp near Pihitharoth, between Migdal and the sea. They are to encamp by the sea directly opposite of baal Zephon. Pharaoh will think the Israelites are wandering around the land in confusion, hemmed in by the desert. We see, obviously, that the Israelites protest to uh, Moses. They're saying, hey, what, what was your plan, man? You got us stuck here. Like, God's leading us straight to a sea. Like, there's no way we can cross it. And behind us, we have a big mountain. And uh, he, we were in one spot that was on the edge of the desert, and now you moved us here, where we feel truly trapped. What's the plan? We think it would be better to just go back to our old way of living. It might have been better to just go back to doing what we were doing. Like, so I think it's funny that we read where God's like, hey, I'm going to send them there. Pharaoh's going to think they're confused. And I'm like, God, they are confused. 
Like, they, they don't know what you're doing. They truly are like, just they think that you've sent them to be trapped, to, for Pharaoh to come and have their way with them. Like, they have no idea what your plan is. In fact, it doesn't really seem like they're trusting you. They seem pretty nervous. I know it's so easy for us to kind of feel that way. Like, man, does God really care? Does God really have a plan for me? Like, all I see when I look in front of me is confusion. I just feel confused. I feel stuck in the fact that my bank account is getting smaller and my debt is getting bigger. I don't know what I'm going to do. And it's because I'm at college, but college is supposed to help me for the future. And I believe that it will, but I'm also kind of really nervous about it and scared. And I don't know, like, I just see this massive sea of problems. And everything else is coming to get me from behind. And I, I'm, just, I'm just not sure. I'm pretty confused. I have a friend, a pastor friend, who, I mean, just recently we were on the phone and he, he made a move. He moved from one church to the other in, in November. And he opens with, you know, Tim, this is great. It was a great move. We were ready for it. We feel like God really called us. But we're a little bit confused. We got here and uh, we've had multiple contracts on homes go under. It didn't work. We were going to buy a house. It didn't work. We were going to buy a second house. That one didn't work. A third house. Didn't work. In fact, the realtor, they had a lot of problems with their realtor. Uh, at one point, it was crazy. He was driving, and they like, got stuck on ice and slid down and uh, hit this like tree. And he got out and looked, and if it weren't for the tree, it was a 100-foot cliff. Like, and so just those moments where he's like, oh my gosh, like, I made a move, and I literally almost died just by being here. And, uh, and then now they're living at some people's house, and... and because of where they were storing their stuff. They had a few months before uh, they needed to get into another house before the, the storage price went way up. So starting in February, they have to pay $1,000 a month for their storage if they don't get a house. And as of right now, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, we just talked a couple of weeks ago, and so it's still this, this moment where he just feels really confused. And he was like, you know, I feel like God has a plan. Originally, he said he was going to lead me somewhere. Originally, he said he was going to take me out of slavery. And, and I believed him. That's why we stepped out in faith. But now, man, I just, I'm not so sure. I believed God when, when I felt like he was calling me to, to college and, and even to date this person or to hang out with those people. But now, I'm, I'm really not sure. I don't even think I'm in the right major. And I felt like God was leading me the whole way. I'm just confused. So the Israelites feel that same way. They're, they're expressing that. And so Moses just replies like this. Do not be afraid. Stand firm, and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring to you today. The Egyptians you see today, will, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. And I read that, and I was like, oh, that's a good word. That's good. I get that. I've heard that before. Be still and know that I am God. I was like, oh, yeah, like, I get it. That's the point. That's the home run. That's what I got to hit. Hey, just be still. Whatever you're worried about, whatever you feel stuck in, maybe you're kind of aware now. Like, hey, I recognize that I'm stuck in some really bad spending habits. I realize that I'm stuck in just terrible discipline when it comes to my eating or even who I spend my time around or even how I talk. Uh, so now I kind of want to move forward. And so I, I planned on just being like, hey, just be still. God's going to do something in your life. But then I read the next part. And it's the Lord now. And the Lord says, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. And I was like, uh, God, I'm, I am now confused. I am writing a message about how not to be confused. And you've confused me because Moses, who is your mouthpiece, um, he's saying things that, that, that oppose what you're saying. Moses is saying, be still. That's right. He's a prophet, so you're using him to communicate. But then you say, move on. Go forward. And I was like, God, this seems like a contradiction. What do we do? How do we fix the problems that we're in? How do we get out of what we're stuck in? And, and I think that it's both. It is, hey, we're going to just be still for a second, and then we're going to move on. God's going to make a way. See, the Israelites, I think that they're, they're wiggling around. They're constantly doing what I was doing. They were taking every side street and looking for every option to get out, to not have to take the hard way. They literally were talking about becoming slaves again. They were like, remember how great we had it as slaves? We were getting whipped all the time. It was fantastic. 
malnourished. It was wonderful. Out here, it just doesn't even seem like there's a way out. So they're probably just going to kill us. And Moses is like, hey, just hold on a second. And this is the guy, right, who before didn't want any of this responsibility. But now that he's been walking with God, he realizes, man, when God says he's with me, that means he's going to take care of me. So even if it's confusing, when I look out, uh, I'm just going to listen to what he has to say. Because usually he's right. Actually, every single time he's been right. When he tells me to do something, he's right. And so for me, I'm passing it on to you and I'm saying, hey, just be still. What are, you, what are you stuck in? What do you feel like you can't get out of? Is it an addiction? Is it a habit? Is it, is it a mood, an attitude? Just be still for a second. Stop thinking about it. Stop talking about it. Just hold on. And I believe in that, as we raise our awareness of God, He says, okay, now I'm going to make a way. It didn't seem like it, but I'm going to make a way. Your family's in a tough situation, but if you just hold on and you be still and you know that I am God, I'm going to make a way. So here I want to make it really practical for you because like that can sound kind of like, all right, yeah, be still, move on. What, I'm, that's a little, that in itself is confusing. This whole message is confusing, Tim. What do you want us to do? Have you ever been at the grocery store and you're standing in like a long line and you're like, what is, ha are they paying with goats? Like what are they doing, right? And you see another line and there's like a few, there's a few less people and you're like, uh, the obvious choice is to move over here. And I'll stand in this line. And then you're there and you're like, what? now they have their checkbook out and they bought like 16 things, that's it. But for some reason they're like, what is happening? And you realize that where you were, if you would have stayed there, you now would have been checked out because the person behind you is the one at the register. And so you're like, crap. If I would have just stayed still, God would eventually move me forward. It's those things in our life that that we just feel so trapped by, there seems like there's no way out, and really all we want to do is for God to change our circumstances. God, just ch change my circumstance. Get me out. I, I, make a different way. I don't, I don't want this to be my life anymore. And God is like, no, 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 that's not how it works. Instead, pray that I'll use your circumstance. What seemed like a closed door was actually the very thing that God was going to use for them to get across. He, he parts the Red Sea, right? And so they begin to cross it. But here's how God works. This is, this is really important because I want you to realize that no matter what your past is, whatever you feel like is chasing you down as you look towards your confusing future, God is the God who says, hey, when I take you out of slavery, I'm not just helping you escape. We're not just escaping because someone who's escaping is constantly having to look over their shoulder. But as a believer, we're not just escaping, we're now moving on and God is going to kill what keeps a slave because as the Israelites get to the other side and the Egyptians come and follow them and are walking through the Red Sea, God says, you're done. And the Red Sea closes up. Everything in my past, it's over. And now all I have to do is use that story. It still happened. But now it's an opportunity to say, yeah, I used to be a slave, but now, man, look at how God delivered me. It's all Him. And the next time I'm facing something that seems impossible and that it would take a miracle, I'm going to believe, no, I serve a God of miracles. He does crazy stuff. The Israelites could have done nothing for the Red Sea to part. Let's be Christians that don't just believe in God, but we believe that God does things on our behalf. He does incredible things that we can't control. There is someone right now creating a position for you, preparing a spot for you that when you get out of college, that might be where you go work. You've never even met them yet, but God's already beginning to work things for you. That's how He works. And the more that we get a hold of it and we believe it, we really do get to live a fulfilling, wonderful life that just says, boy, it doesn't look like there's a way, but, but you make ways. You do. That's how it happens. God, I thank you for tonight. I'm hoping right now that someone that is maybe stuck in a situation in their life uh, isn't panicking. They don't have to feel like they got to jump over into a different line or take a different side street that for just a minute they can be still. And then you'll begin to open up ways for them to move forward. We thank you for Jesus that he died for us, that he rose, that his blood makes us righteous, that when you look at us, you see him. What an amazing story, and it is good news. 
In Jesus' name we pray, amen.